The family of Kayla Mueller, the US aid worker held hostage by the Islamic State militant group in Syria, say they're heartbroken after being sent information by IS that she is dead. Her death was confirmed by President Obama, who said she represented what is best about America and vowed to bring her captors to justice. Kayla Mueller was abducted in Aleppo in 2013. Her family said she was a compassionate and devoted humanitarian. Well, earlier I spoke to the Telegraph journalist Ruth Sherlock, a friend of Kayla Mueller, and I began by asking what kept driving her on. I think the first thing that strikes you about Kayla when you meet her is that she has this both kind but very adventurous spirit. Um, she was always keen to do more, to, to volunteer in as many uh, humanitarian ventures as she possibly could. Um, but also fun-loving, would laugh easily and, and also very um, careful about sort of being aware of other people's feelings. She had done aid work in Asia before going into Syria. I mean, w was she always just sort of effectively moving around as a, as a freelance? No, I think she had an interest in doing humanitarian aid work and she also helped out in charities back home. Um, but I think what really bound her to Syria as well was a, a personal connection. Uh, she fell in love with a Syrian. Uh, he was an activist who was at great personal risk helping journalists get inside Damascus um, covertly to, to report on the atrocities be com being committed by the Assad regime. Um, they met in Cairo when she was couch surfing, um, sort of sleeping on, on people's couches in, uh, in, in, in Cairo in Egypt. Uh, and, uh, and they stayed in touch and over time a relationship developed. Um, at the time that I met her, she was actually uh, being an au pair in France. Um, and I was introduced to her by the activist and she wanted to ask advice on what she could do next and how she could come back to the Middle East. Um, she also felt very passionately about what was happening in Syria, you know, through him and of course news reports. She was learning about the, the uh, awful humanitarian catastrophe there um, and she really wanted to do whatever she could to help. She travelled in uh, from Turkey to Syria, well really on her own, taking a very risky route. I mean, do you think she was aware of the dangers that she was, she was running doing that? I think she did travel in at a very dangerous time. It was, the, it was in August on 2013, which uh, by that point many journalists and foreign aid workers had already been kidnapped. Um, I think she felt drawn to the place. She'd heard so much about it. She was doing everything she could uh, working for a local Turkish NGO that was helping Syrian refugees on the border town. And I think it was a natural instinct of wanting to see for herself, you know, it's an inter instinct that so many of us feel, wanting to see for herself um, the stories, the awful stories that, that these refugees were telling her. Um, I know that she asked a Syrian friend repeatedly to take her inside, uh, and you know, even though he was telling her of, of the dangers. But I think, of course, if you haven't been in one of these conflict zones before, it's very, very difficult to really appreciate the danger uh, until you're inside, and that's part of what makes what happened to Kayla so tragic. Ruth Sherlock, and the White House has said tonight that there is at least one more American hostage being held in the Middle East.